what Nanado has subjected you to is the worst of humiliation where police vehicles and uniform will be deployed to conduct this dastardly act and people will be blaming the Ghana police service. I am telling you, we know it is not your way. President Akufuado must know that when he swore the oath on the 7th of January, the oath of president, he swore an oath to protect the constitution. The constitution of Ghana states that you cannot form a standing army without the approval of parliament. No president has the power to set up a standing army without the prior approval of parliament. Ah. We are in government, we never unleash terrorists on the people. Everything we did, we did it peacefully. Everything we did, we did it peacefully. Everything we did was very peaceful because President Mahama is a very peaceful person. So he ensured that whatever we did was done peacefully. Can you imagine what happened at Iowa and West Morgan? Common by election. It was like war. I was scared. I was very extremely scared. I was far away in Nigeria. And I was watching the president. Why is this Ghana? This demonstration is happening because some people believe it was a security breach at Ayawaso West which resulted in electoral violence. But then again, one will also ask, what is the position of the constitution, especially when there's a wild speculation that the police service is highly influenced by politicians? Now, let's talk about the constitution. Article 201 of the 1992 Constitution gives the Vice President that power to serve on the Police Council. And this to many of the politicians is bad. And the time has come for that particular article of the Constitution to be amended. One, in order to extricate the police from all forms of influence and also ensure some level of professionalism. But the big question is, will these politicians allow that to happen? It's just a matter of time. But let's listen to former Ghana's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. I think are now mistrusting the police because some other police can molest you and go scot free. And that's what we are talking about. Now, you see a lot of policemen here, but can you tell me which one is genuine and which one is not? Uh, Maybe wearing the uniform and he's not a police officer. I can't tell. That's the, that, that's the problem we have. So there's a level of serious insecurity. And you know it can degenerate into something else if we don't curtail it and stop all these uh, uh, invisible forces and all those para, uh, political groups and all that. If they stop all this, and I mean all political parties, if there's any, which has any other group of people. Yes, the police probably may not keep us security, but we don't want these people going brutalizing people. What, what would you have done differently? You have been in government before. I am. Um, what, what would you have done differently? I would not have sent hoodlums and put uniform on them and give them police vehicles and guns. But they said they are national security. You they know are national not, security are not supposed to wear that, uniform. The one who owned up knows very well that he lied. Brian Achampo has lied to the people of Ghana. He should be sanctioned. Uh, but, but we also know that this particular unit was created in the NDC no, administration. It created anti-terrorist squad. It was against terrorism. Do you understand? That was when it was created. You can ask the former IGP. So if somebody's using them to do other things, molesting our own people, then we have a, a problem with that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Brian Achampo has admitted that he sent those boys there and he should be responsible for what they did to the other people that's all we are saying i have spoken to some of your colleagues they want one thing the, a police service that is embroiled in professionalism can we achieve that <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, I don't really know what to say, but I'm saying the... Is that a difficult question? Yeah, uh, not really. But uh, as far as this 
demonstration is concerned. Um, we aim at getting the security services to be as professional as possible uh, to make sure that they do their work according to what the Constitution of Ghana says without fear or favor. The security services should be able to know their mandate and not allow themselves to be used for the abuse and the criminality of our constitution. One would say, is that not a, a statement coined or linked to some level of hypocrisy? Because they are, the, 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 the accusing fingers are always pointing at you, the politician, using or you know, influencing the, 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 the service. Uh, if you see what is happening in the United States with the probe of Trump, you understand? That is sort of professionalism we are talking about, where the police will do their work without allowing the politician, whoever he is, whether he's in government or outside government, to influence him. Because the policeman swore an oath to defend the laws and to protect the lives and property of Ghana. And so if a policeman should allow any ordinary person, a politician, who will want to satisfy his own capricious aggrandizement and also his own selfish interest to use him, then the policeman is not being professional. What happened the last time is a disgrace to the police because the police sat down and allowed people to usurp the authority and their powers. People who don't have any rights, any mandates under the constitution of Ghana to usurp their powers, disarm the authority and use it for things that are not uh, 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 in line with the constitution and the law.